today I would like to share some minimalist practices that have certainly made a big difference in my life and I hope they can potentially be life-changing for you too. Hi friends, welcome to today's video. Let's just jump right in. I have changed a lot of things in the past few years and by rethinking a lot of areas in my life I have created more capacity just to have white space and to have free time. I've delegated a lot of stuff and here are some things that have made a big difference for me. The first thing is to really get into the habit of having clear surfaces. Granted it's hard when you have kids. Our living room and our dining room table we have a big dining room table and so kids always do stuff on there. Romy loves to draw and paint and do crafts and do games on there. And so the table gets crowded a lot, but we have all had a deal. We've come up with a deal to where at the end of the day, we have to clear all surfaces. So the kitchen is my domain, of course. And when I just started reducing the stuff that I even have in my cabinets, the countertops followed. It just made it a lot easier because I don't know, not having stuff so much in your cupboards and in your cabinets. For some reason for me, it really helped me to not have so much clutter on my countertops. And having clear surfaces really declutters my mind. It helps me to think more clearly and it just calms me. The next thing that has made a profound, huge difference in my life is something, well, I didn't coin the term, it's the Sunday basket, but Lisa Woodruff from Organized 365. I will put the link somewhere. She has a website, she has a podcast. It's awesome to get motivated about organizing your home. And um, the Sunday basket is a concept where, you know, you basically just dump all your paperwork, anything that floats around that comes in, you just dump it in. And then once a week you go through all of your papers, whether it's bills, something that needs to be taken action on or something you need to keep for maybe a week or two for kids or forms to sign, anything to take care of. I keep it in my Sunday basket and every once in a while I just go through it and sort it out if it needs to be filed away or if it needs to be sent somewhere, or if it can be tossed. The next thing that is more of a concept of and a lifestyle is frugal living, really getting more in the mindset of needing less and just taking care of the things I already have so I don't have to buy new ones or new stuff, new versions of whatever I have has gotten me into this mindset of frugal living. And it's really funny because when I had less money, I spent a lot more and now I actually make more money, but I also need a lot less, which of course then helps me to save more, to invest more. And it makes me feel even better because I have more of a cushion. Being smart with your money, being very frugal and thinking about especially consumer goods, consumer things that you buy once and then maybe they go to waste or just really ask yourself, is that something that's going to make my life easier or better? Is it really worth spending the money? And you always have to think of money in terms of how much effort and time do I have to put into, you know, do, does it have to take away from my day, from my life in order to make that amount of money in order to buy this thing? Is it worth it to me to trade my time, my effort, my capacity, you know, maybe possibly spending less time with your family because you have to spend more time working in order to make the money that you can buy these things with. And I have really gotten into this mindset of frugality so much because I just, I don't know, for some things I hate spending money and I, I'm very intentional about it. I, you know, recently I bought a couple of sweaters and I was, I looked on the internet for a long time. I had in mind exactly what I wanted and I didn't want to go somewhere to a store and run around all day. I just looked in a very intentional way and then I said, okay, I want a good quality. I want something that's exactly what I want and exactly what I need right now. No more, no less. And this is how much money I want to spend on it. I want it to be good quality, but I also don't want it to be a ripoff. So I don't, I wouldn't spend a hundred dollars for a sweater ever in my life. Really frugal living has made a huge difference in my life. The next thing had that has really changed my mind capacity is just switching more to a capsule wardrobe, reducing the clothes I have and thinking more minimalist, just having basic pieces, just a few colors that I appreciate a lot. I like whites, I like blacks, I like grays, and I like just a couple of colors thrown in, a little bit of pink, a little bit of blue. 
and that's all I need. It does make me happy at this point. I may change my colors at one time, but I think I will never go away from that principle of just having basics. Everything goes with everything and it's, you know, it's not in fashion or out of fashion ever because it's never in fashion or out of fashion ever because it never goes out of style. It's just very timeless style. And I love looking at my wardrobe and just seeing a few pieces. It makes it very easy to decide. I always wear pretty much leggings and some kind of top. If I go outside, I have a pair of jeans. That's pretty much all I wear. When I go outside, I have, you know, I'm a performing artist also. I do have a separate wardrobe that is just for that, but I don't have to think a lot. I recently decluttered that too, so I don't have a lot of stuff anymore. So when I open up and I see everything spaced, I don't have to dig through stuff to find something and it makes decisions very easy. Okay, the next thing is my purse. I have really switched to a very minimal purse. I don't carry a lot of stuff with me anymore. If I go for more than a couple hours out of the house, I actually take more than my purse. I actually take a basket where I take something to drink, maybe a couple snacks, some nuts. If I go for longer trips, driving on a road trip or something where I maybe we visit my family who lives, you know, a few hours away from here, I actually take a basket and I put a bunch of stuff in there, snacks and whatever I need on the way, but as far as my purse goes, I really need my purse to go buy groceries and shop for whatever I need out there. And so I just basically have my wallet and one little thing where I have all my cards in if I need them and my phone. It's really all I carry and I've made a video recently that I will link here about my purse tour and my wallet tour, very minimal. This also helps you to never have to really sort anything out in your purse because you don't put a lot in, you don't take a lot. So the next two things are really more of a mindset thing, not that actually have a lot of applications on practical things. The first thing is being much more intentional with my time and money. I really think about what am I gonna spend my time on? I say no to almost everything and I say no to almost everything commitment-wise or spending money-wise. I'm very intentional, for example, buying stuff. If I want something, you can make wish lists. For example, if you buy stuff on Amazon, you can make a wish list or like a, like a shopping list. And I never buy on impulse unless it's something that I run out of, like some herbs that I actually need that I can't get anywhere else. But everything else, I really put it on a wish list and I leave it there for a few days or weeks depending on how expensive the item is. So if I want anything like when it comes to camera gear, a new lens or something, or for my music studio, there's a lot you could pot potentially get. And so it's very dangerous because you can spend a lot of money within a short amount of time. And you know, I don't have a bad income, but I have put on aut autopilot my finances to where a lot of my money, I don't ever see it. It goes directly into my savings, into my daughter's savings. And, you know, I pay my team members and then I don't really have a lot to live on because I don't need a lot to live on. And I'd rather live on less and then just save a lot. But instead of just buying on impulse, I put things on a list and I wait it out. And after a while, sometimes I realize, well, that was kind of a shiny object syndrome. I thought I needed it so badly, but I could totally do without it. And I do the same with time commitments. Sometimes there are things I wanna do, I get inspired. And so, you know, I wait it out a little bit. I ask myself, do I really wanna anything else that takes up my schedule? Is it worth it to me? Is it gonna benefit me as much as I think it is? Uh, there's a lot of things I wanna do. I'm one of these people, I have so many interests. I would do so much if I had the time, but again, you know, it's really about filtering out those things that don't truly get you to where you want to be in your life and you just have to be very selective. And lastly, really asking yourself about the purpose of everything you do and everything you have. If I see something, you know, decluttering really makes a lot of sense. I don't agree so much with Marie Kondo's method of does it bring me joy? There are definitely things that don't bring me joy, but I need them. Um, toothpaste, I can't say that it brings me joy, but I definitely need it. And I can't say that a cooking pot brings me joy, but it's one of the items that I just definitely need. Also, clothes 
I don't know, like clothes don't really bring me joy or anything. It's just a necessity. And, you know, it, it, I'm thankful that I have clothes and I'm grateful that I can clothe myself, but it's not like it's like this emotional thing. And not everything does trigger some kind of emotion, but really asking yourself, what is the purpose? Does it make my life easier? Does it actually bring joy to where it's really worth having it? Is the joy more than the grief about like having to put it somewhere and find a place and then having clutter. So just kind of ask yourself, is there this balance, the value it provides and what it costs you? And also the tools. I'm an online entrepreneur and so there are so many tools you can be using that cost money every month. Nowadays, everything is sold as like a subscription bundle. And so for example, to have Photoshop and to have and video editing software, a lot of those, like Adobe runs everything as a monthly subscription model. So you can't just buy it once. I mean, you do have all the updates, but you can't buy it once and be done with it. You have to have a monthly subscription and it's a commitment. And then there are so many tools, social media scheduling, and then, you know, team workflow. And there are so many tools you can get. And I do have several of them that I pay for monthly. But then really a lot of them, you know, I ask myself, is it actually going to benefit me to where I can actually have more revenue and make more money because of those tools? Are they really helping me do that? Or is it just something that is nice to have, but it's not really making a big difference? Really asking yourself, is there a purpose for this? And I know, especially when it comes to apps and subscriptions, they're so nice to have, but that's why I have this budgeting tool. It's called Every Dollar by uh, Dave Ramsey. I'm not affiliated in any way. I've just used it. I've used it for many years. And I love looking at my budget and I see every little thing that I spend money on every month listed and I go through there frequently and rethink it. And I ask myself, what is the purpose of it? And do I really still need it? Sometimes your needs change. And so you may have needed something, but maybe you tried it and then you find out, no, nah, it's not really worth the money anymore, maybe. And so maybe, or I need a different tool. Maybe I need to change it, exchange it for something else. So really asking yourself about the purpose of everything is just going to help you. So these to me are some really life-changing practices that if you start getting into the habit of doing these things, it's going to make a huge difference and it's going to help you simplify your life and ultimately bring you more happiness because you're not constantly struggling. I mean, we know this feeling where you just, you're swamped. You just don't even know where to start. It never stops, right? It's like email. It never stops coming. You think you dug yourself out of the hole. And as soon as you do that, a couple days later, you're just up to here again. And you're starting again. And you're thinking, can I ever get to the point to where I actually have just nothing to do? <laughs> I know. And I promise if you adhere to these principles and you do this more and more in more and more areas of your life, you will have more and more little islands of time and space in your life to where you actually have time to do nothing or to do something that you would like to do if you really had nothing else to do. <laughs> Let's face it, doing nothing doesn't really exist. So even if you just lay down, that's something you do. But I'm just talking about nothing scheduled. Get off the schedule to where, get off the schedule to where every single minute of your life is taken up. Thank you so much for listening and for watching today. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed yet, consider subscribing for more videos about minimalism, simple lifestyle, decluttering your life, and just having more capacity. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful week. And until next time, keep it simple.